Okay. Call this meeting to order. Please rise. We'll salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Tonight there'll be a vote to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining strategy, Unit B, as an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position. There will be no agenda uh, adjustments tonight. This meeting is being videotaped. School choice. I'll entertain a motion to suspend the regular meeting and open a public hearing on school choice. I'll make the motion. Drop and second by Sidgwick. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Motion carries. Any comments on school choice? We'll do it outside the public hearing. Yep. Thank you. No comment on school choice. Okay, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing and return to the regular meeting. So moved. Situate? Answer. Answer. Any discussion or closing? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Back here on. Turn, turn to regular meeting. Yep. All right, now we're back to the regular meeting. And now we need a motion. Yes. I just did. Oh, uh, second. Yeah, second. Yeah, second. Oh, I've been oh, training back to the regular meeting. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> well, I'll second that. Second it. Okay. Any discussion returning to the regular school meeting? Saying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? None. The motion carries. Jack, if you could read that, please. Sure can. Okay, I move that the South Shore Regional School District not participate in the school choice choose program for school year 2022 to 2023 because the school district has an established process for admitting students who reside outside the school district. Need a second on that? I'm second. Yeah, that. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, aye. aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Are there any comments from the public tonight? Seeing none, approve minutes. I'd ask for a motion to approve the set of minutes given to us in the package. Motion. Rockland. Second by Abington. That both sets? Yes, both. Sets. Yep. Yeah. Any discussion? Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Student advisory. Mark. So tonight, I'd just like to take a moment and thank Grace. This is her last meeting. She graduated oh. in oh. two and a half weeks. I know. <laughs> two and a half weeks. Finally. Finally. We're <laughs> not counting, are we? How many hours? <laughs> On behalf of Ms. Balder, the leadership team, the staff, uh, and your students, I do have to say that Grace has done an incredible job representing all of our students, um, advocating for them, working with leadership to hear their needs and try and take care of what they want. So I just want to say that Grace has done a great job as student body president and representative to the school committee. And if you were lucky enough, I know Mr. Petrozelli did, if you were lucky enough to see her in the play last month, and please, she also did a fabulous job in that. So just a moment to say thank you to Grace and we'll welcome up for her last meeting. Thank you. that way all the time. <laughs> um, so I haven't been here in the past two meetings, but I don't have a lot for today. 
Um, first up, we have the walkathon that took place on April 30th for our junior, Nick Reynas, who's an electrical. Um, he raised a lot of money that's going to be going to his family to help cover medical costs, and we also had the walkathon, which helped with the donation as well. That should be heading to the family soon. We have Skills USA. Um, Patrick Tanzi, Metal Fabrication Well Held, and got bronze. We have Samantha Tulio in Cosmo, uh, over 500, who also got bronze. Timothy Woodward in, Com in Carpentry, who also got bronze. Ian Toll in Automotive, bronze. Ronan D in Screen Printing, got silver. B. Sulk in C. Goats, I hope I said that right, um, got silver. And Freshman Safety Poster Design. And South Shore, uh, South Shore chapter for the Costello Family Community Service Award, we got silver. <coughs> I also want to take a minute to talk about something that a GSA member or K Street Alliance Club, um, August Packard, came up with. Uh, they created transition threats, which is a cool way for us to donate clothing so that way other students at the school or wherever can do like a shopping day. Um, free of charge, obviously, and they can walk around and pick up clothing that they may not feel comfortable picking up at a store in front of their parents or in front of other people. So it's a way that they don't have to come out of the closet, but they can still get clothes that make them feel comfortable. Um, we also got a little over $200 that August is going to put into gift cards and donate to other places, which is really cool. We were at the Chalk Fest last Saturday. Um, that was a huge help as well, at least according to August. And last, we have prom, which is tomorrow night, uh, at the Indian Pond Country Club, which I just popped up today, at 6 tomorrow. And the Grand March will be at here at 5 in the gym. Thank you guys for this year. This was really cool. I've never done something like this before, so I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a culinary de uh, demonstration here in the school with um, one of the local chefs. And we also um, posted a bunch of the uh, job boards and, and some of the co-op employers that we're dealing with. So, um, second page is our summary of financial position, cash balances as of April 30th, 2022. And all of our um, operating and stabilization Funds. We've got about $7.2 million, um, which is basically a lot of stabilization for all the future projects that we have. Um, we also have about $848,000 in our OPEB reserve account that we fund every year with a little bit of money from our budget um, for future use. Page two, our revenue for the month. We did collect all of the other outstanding uh, assessments from all of our towns, a total of about $602,000. So all of our member towns have paid their third installment of their assessments. We also received um, our state funds, and pretty much everybody in our out-of-district tuition has paid. Weymouth is a little behind. They do everything electronically, so they're, they're usually slow because of the way that they issue their payments. So everything else is going smooth, so a total revenue for the month of about $975,000. On the back side, we have the um, final um, the expenditures for the month of April. Again, total $899,000, majority of that is the payroll and health insurance are the two major items. And again, the operations, we've slowed down on a lot of the purchasing as the school year winds down um, and a lot of the movements around and trying to figure out where, where we need to spend the money and so forth. So everything's running smoothly. Um, Tom and I are working together with end of the year numbers to see if there's any surplus projections and so forth and we'll be bringing that back to the committee on our June meeting. So that's the finished report, and again, we're in good shape. Okay. Motion to accept the first situation. Second. Having it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> no. Motion carries. Warrants. 
warrants 21, 21.1, 21A, 22, 22.1. In 22A, totaling $1,156,923.76. Second. Second. Whitman? Any discussion on the uh, warrants? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Budget transfers. Yes, and we, we number our warrants in a way just to confuse all the math teachers in the room because they're wondering <laughs> how we get up with that system, but it's a long standing way that we somehow number our warrants, so it's, it's crazy. Yeah, we, I about. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, we do have a, num a, a number of um, transfers this month because as we're coming down to the end of the year again, the budget is always established about 18 months from you know the end of the, the school year. so. We throw darts, we make the best judgments we can for the budget. Um, things arise that are unexpected, so therefore there's always going to be a little bit of um, movement at the end of the year as we get closer to the, to the end. So through April, we're at, looking to add money into the uniform account, uh, the repairs and maintenance account, and the annual inspections account, along with books and instructions and shop supplies. We'd like to transfer out of the budgets where we have some um, identified savings of, from the athletic expenses material disposal, travel, and the technology line item. So overall, um, those are the budget transfers for the evening. I'll make the motion as printed in the uh, request for the treasurer. Second. All well, well, second by Rockham. Any discussion on the budget transfers? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion carries. Anything else, Jim? Uh, no, we're going up. We're doing some bidding um, in the process, and again, Janine and, and I just doing a great job on the purchasing side, along with Pam doing the payroll, um, working on all of our end of the year projections, and trying to figure out the payroll numbers. Uh, it's her first cycle through this process, so it's um, a good learning exercise, and she's doing a great job with everything. So. Very good. Very good. Nothing from the chairman tonight, and there are no subcommittee reports. That's a close. Superintendent Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a brief report tonight. Uh, first up, uh, happy to report that all eight of our communities supported our assessment for our fiscal 23 budget. So this uh, the budget cycle closes, we get a little bit of a break, and then we're back at it in the fall. But Norwell's town meeting on May 9th was the last of our eight communities. And so that budget uh, with the assessments is in effect. MSBA process update. Later on under new business, we'll have two items to take up. They are essentially the last two homework assignments we have for the first module. Uh, one of the items will be the, uh, the Chapter 74 uh, document that talks about a program vision. Uh, MSBA wants vocational schools that are in the pipeline to identify programs that have a strong labor market demand that, without knowing the size or the space of the school, what might you consider? And the reason they ask for that is because they want, to, they want to give this document to the Department of Education for a preliminary review. And what the department will do is look at it, and it's not getting anything approved, nothing is factual, it's all just potential. MSBA wants to know up front from the Department of Education, would this be a viable program? And what they do is they have their career and vocational unit take a closer look, and they look at the same labor market data that, that we would look at. It won't be for a long time into the engineering and design process. And a separate process starting with the committee and then going back to the department that we would eventually make a decision what, if anything, we would expand into. But they do ask schools to do this up front. So Whittier, Bristol Plymouth, uh, Cape Tech, all of the schools that have been ahead of us in the pipeline would have done something similar. So the vote tonight is simply to be able to forward the initial documentation to MSBA for their review. The second item, uh, more concrete item, will be to vote the fe a feasibility vote, which we'll hear later. It's a uh, kind of a packaged motion that we'll make that will earmark $900,000, which is an estimated amount of money that we're going to need in order to conduct feasibility studies once the MSBA gives us approval to go into the next module. They want to know that at the local level, there is support for this and that there are no guarantees but if, in fact, we do move further into the pipeline and we are accepted, part of that money that we spend on feasibility will be reimbursed. 
They estimate now, if it were to happen today, that our reimbursement rate would be about 55%. $900,000 is an educated guess, and should any district be in the situation where the eventual costs for a design firm and a project manager, if they were to go over the allocated amount, then that matter would come back in front of the committee. But uh, the MSBA does not tell districts what to budget. Essentially, you're looking to see what the market is, you're looking at similar projects, you're looking at similar school sizes. So for now, that's gonna be the recommendation that we'll look at later. But with those two final pieces, my best sense from the MSB is that we'll go into the summer having completed our homework, hoping to hear back from them, maybe by the fall, that their legal team and others have looked at all of the documentation we've submitted, hopefully being able to convene our building committee and begin the process of module two, which is a project manager and an engineer. So this is the last couple of steps for, for module one. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in just a, in, in a few minutes. We'll, and the last time I have before turning it over to Mark and Sandy is we have a couple of textbooks from our English department that I'll be pursuing with the department in the upcoming month. The housekeeper and the professor in just mercy. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it over to our administrators. Very good. Wait for the coin toss. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I lost the coin. Yeah, we go. Uh, <laughs> Always pigtails. You go. No, you go. <laughs> a couple of housekeeping items before we get to our guest tonight. Uh, I know that uh, Grace mentioned tomorrow night is prom. If you're around at 5 o'clock, we do our grand march into the gym. It's a great opportunity just to see the kids in their tuxes and their gowns. And, uh, it's a really good take. A half an hour, it's done usually by 5 30. So if you're around and available, please. Uh, Feel free to come in and take a look. Uh, June 4th is graduation, 10 a.m. I'll have Ms. Rossi send out the usual request if you're gonna be in attendance or not so we can plan properly for that. The other night that I'd like you to, to maybe put on your calendar is June 14th. That's our night of excellence. That's one of the highlights of the school year for me. Uh, that's when we recognize students in the 9th, 10th, and 11th grade who have done exemplar work all year long or show great improvement and for some of these students it's the first time they've ever been recognized for their schooling and their schoolwork and we bring them into the gym and we have a little ceremony we call their names they shake people's hands and it's just a good hour uh, a nice way to kind of wrap up the year and give these students a pat on the back for working hard and either being great all year or improving themselves throughout the year. So that's June 14th That'll start at 6.30. We're also, on that same night at five o'clock, we are welcoming the class of 2026. Ooh. So if you're available for two or three hours that night, so June 14th at five o'clock, we'll have the class of 2026 in, kind of welcome them, let them see some faces, talk to them a little bit, uh, give them some schedule stuff to make them understand where they're gonna go in their exploratory realm. And then we'll move into the other night at about 6.30. So if you guys are available, as always, more than welcome. We'd love to see you. Okay? Any questions about logistics or anything before I move on? Mr. Mahoney. Uh, the night of excellence. If yes. it's weather permitting and it's very, very warm, or it's like it's been in the past there and a lot of people in the gym, would there be any consideration about doing it outside? Uh, I don't know if we would have the seating. It would have to be about the seating, Mr. But yes, it does tend to get warm that time of year. But we could venture that. Any other hands? Awesome. Okay. So I have with me tonight uh, the math department. If they seem a little tired today, that's yes. because uh, we just finished math MCAS and they probably slept less than I did the last couple days. I never sleep on MCAS days. It's just nervous. It went very, very well. So. Not being able to be with us tonight is uh, Mrs. Pamela Walsh, uh, Miss Minnie Doherty, and Mrs. Liz Garish. They were not able to make it tonight, but we do have with us uh, Miss Allie King, Mr. Doyle, Miss Lombardi, Miss Palmer, and Miss Fortin. I'm going to ask them to come up in a minute, and they don't know that now. They're really upset with me. Uh, just to say who they are, where they came from, how they got into education. We've gone through this with the other departments that we've done to this group, but I do want to say a second. Um, Ms. Palmer is retiring at the end of the year. She started here in 1904 um, as an aide and is retiring after 28 years 
of serving the students in this building. She is leaving behind a great legacy. She set the department up for the years to come with uh, technology and different ways for them to access and communicate with each other and provide curriculum to each other. She's really done a fabulous job um, as education has shifted toward more technological advancements and including into the classroom. She has really been a leader for that. So I really thank Tina. The students take th thank Tina for all she's done and I'm sure her department makes help as well. So I do ask that they all come up and just say a couple of words about where they come and what they like about the school. So don't all jump at once now. Come on, Christine, you can start. It's four and five. You're the newest. You get to go first. Oh, yay. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Christine Horton. Um, this is my first. I've almost completed my first year here at South Shore Road Tech. I taught uh, middle school math in Marshfield for eight years prior. And prior to that, I was in corporate. I worked at the Gillette Company for 12 years in South Boston. Um, I was interested in shifting into high school, and it's been a great experience. The school is amazing. I love, um, I, I really love that they have the opportunity to do shop week and learn a trade, and then jump into the academics. Um, the kids are great. The staff is amazing, as well as our administration. So I loved it. It's been a great first Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Late, but welcome. <laughs> Tina Palmer. Been around a while. Um, as Mark told you, I started out as an aide here, but um, vocational education is in my blood. My dad was a vocational director um, over at Silver Lake, so I was in shops from the time I could toddle. Uh, so it was a. I was very excited to be able to come to a, a school like this one. Um, then uh, at one point somebody said, you know, you're training all of our teachers how to teach math, to, especially to the special ed kids, because that was kind of my background in teaching. And um, so why don't you go get your math certification? Uh, but I was a psych soci major, so I don't know if I want to do that. But uh, persuasion was there, I did, and so here I am. I so I've been teaching for a while. But I think, you know, he talked about a legacy. I think my favorite thing is knowing how many people that I taught came back in our aides here. And uh, those two went on to get their math certifications. And one of my students went on to get math certification. But these guys were my students, and then they became aides, and then they became math teachers. And that's just very that's exciting. That's amazing. Wow, that's and great. got another in the pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. How's it going, everybody? Um, my name is Matt Doyle. I graduated, I was a student here. Um, graduated here in 06. I was actually a student of Tina's, a uh, student of Mark's as well. Um, went to UMass Dartmouth, marketing major. Um, corporate world wasn't for me, so teaching was a little bit of a career change. But um, I've since been here for 10 years. I was an eight, I was a sub first, and an eight. And now I've been teaching in the math department for five years. Um, I also coach football and basketball here. And um, you know, it's been a good 10 years, I love working here. He was one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're responsible. <laughs> That's why you're old. Yeah, I, I don't even remember how long I've been here. Sorry. I'm Jay Lombardi. Um, I'm also a math teacher. I started my career, though, in actuarial work. So I did that for 10 years. And then I taught in Dedham for 10 years. And finally transferred over to here. And I've been here. I don't know. Week and a half. I think I'm on 13. 13. I think I'm on 13. Wow. It, you know, hey, but I love the school. You know, I'm happy. I, I had a six minute commute and now I have a 45 minute commute just to come here. So that should say something about the school and that I do like it. And I love the staff and the kids are great. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Allison King. Uh, this is my second year here. I taught in Boston for almost 10 years. I was also a special ed director. Um, so much like Tina, I sort of fell into math. I was a history major in college, um, and then somehow I became a special ed teacher, and then I became a math teacher. Um, and I, uh, I'm really happy here. I, as a SPED director, I spent a lot of time in IEP meetings talking to students who told me, you know, I want to work with cars. And I was working at a traditional high school where there was nothing I could do 
to prepare those students for what they actually wanted to do. They wanted to be, you know, a esthetician. They wanted to work on their dad's car. They wanted to do plumbing or something. And I was like, that sounds great. You're going to be awesome at it. But I need you to go take pre-calculus and all these other courses that aren't actually moving you towards your goal. And so when I decided to leave the city, I really sought out a place where I could actually help students sort of move towards the career they wanted. Um, and so it's year two here. Uh, hopefully they have me back again. <laughs> but uh, I'm really happy here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just point out that once again, we, we pull people from all walks of life who come into education, and that's just a benefit for our students to have skill sets and people who have been out in the real world, not academia, and, and be able to relay what they're actually seeing. So I congratulate all these people and their department mates. And you can have a little extra sleep tonight, and cast is over. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to introduce Ms. Baldwin. She's going to continue with some other stuff. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Sandra. I think it's a credit to the whole department of how they do here because our ed course, uh, ed pass scores are a lot higher than a lot of our communities send it. And I think it's a credit to what they do. Yeah. I think they know that um, we think they're pretty spectacular. I know for a fact how hard they work day in day out with our students, how much the effort they put in at home to ensure that their lessons are planned successfully, that they've done their due diligence and that they're teaching the right things every day, the best that they can. And um, I appreciate them every day. Um, and I hope that they can sneak out here and go get a little bit of rest or celebrate together. We really appreciate them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. stakeholders were involved and that's our administrators who need to make sure that the procedures um, really reflect what is most current through the Department of Ed and the Office of Civil Rights and to make sure that our language is aligned with our policy that we don't have any gaps there. I want to make sure that our teachers are, are represented in the handbook, their vision, and that of course the students are expected to uphold that student handbook that their voice is heard as well. I'm very thankful to the civics uh, classes this year and thankful to the history teachers who implemented quality civics assignments. You heard about Chalk Fest, that was the outcome of one civics assignment. Another was that the students were engaged in uh, line by line revision of the student handbook in their civics classes. And so they came with particular perspectives about what adjustments they would like to see in the student handbook for the 2022 23 school year. And, and we did. Um, make those uh, a part of our revision. And finally, the, uh, I wanted to make sure that the, the language itself was aligned, as I said, to policy and des the most current DESE and Office of Civil Rights language. I, I feel thankful that um, over the last year, I've built a very good working relationship with Justin Gomes from Stoneman, Chandler, and Miller, um, our council. And he finally, I, I think he has learned to understand that I'm with him. He can use his red pen as often as he'd like. He's not going to hurt my feelings uh, in redlining a document. And that our principal's office is very serious about ensuring that any document that we put out of our office um, is the, the most efficient the most appropriate to the audience and the, the most uh, current document. So the student handbook is no exception. Um, he, he tells me that there were no major, as in his first review of our student handbook, that there are no major errors, no major gaps, no major concerns, but that we could um, take a little bit of time to go through a few areas to make sure that they are, in fact, aligned to the most current DESE and Office of Civil Rights Language. Again, no errors, but we want to make sure that there's currency and to make sure that uh, any language we have is aligned to our policy. Um, again, no major errors, but a little tight we need to do. So you'll see that uh, in a memo that I'll provide to you in the next couple of weeks, uh, some information about that. The 
uh, two um, areas where you'll notice a couple of differences is in the HAC policy, and that is in fact to ensure equity for students. Um, we want to make sure that students of any ethnicity or cultural background that our school rules really allow them to feel free to be themselves and that they're not uh, feeling as though they're breaking a rule by representing themselves effectively. So moving forward, we're going to allow students to wear hats as long as they don't have uh, any sort of brim on them. I, I can read the statement to you, but I'll spare you. But they can, wear, they can wear hats as long as there's no brim. If they must wear a baseball cap, they can wear it backwards. Um, so this was also a nod to students in the civics classes wearing hats was something that was important to them. We made it very clear to the students and teachers that hats uh, with brims truly are an obstacle to um, student engagement potentially in classrooms if there are too many kids with hats and coats with brims and it's really hard for the teacher to engage potentially. Um, we also made it clear that wearing hats and uh, hoods in the hallways with forward facing brims can be dangerous both as a parent and as an administrator. If something can be a very safe school, but if something were to happen and I have a responsibility with my peers to identify students very quickly in a larger setting, it is an obstacle to identifying who they are in a very quick fashion, whether that's in real time or on camera. So that's the, those are the, the multiple reasons for the, the brimless uh, hat situation. And then the last uh, change that, we, that you'll notice of any significant been working very hard over the last couple of years, and there's always a little housekeeping to do, on ensuring that we are reviewing expectations for students involved in extracurriculars and sports in the same light. There has been a double standard on how we reviewed um, the students and on what timelines we were reviewing them. Uh, we have aligned it so that anyone involved in any extracurricular is um, has their grades reviewed, expectations for um, participation in their organization that's extracurricular on the same timeline. We have done that, implemented that well this school year. We're making sure that the language reflects that in the future. And with that, I close. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks. Well done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, that uh, handbook item will be, uh, Sandy will have something that we'll, we'll send to you in between this meeting and our June meeting, and the handbook will be a June agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. That's it. New business, school calendar. I'll ask for a motion to approve the 2022-23 year school calendar. Any discussion on the calendar? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> MSBA Chapter 74 viability form. That was in our packet. Document 8, yes. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm all okay. set with the having Q, uh, teed that up in my comments. Oh, okay. Yep. So, uh, document A is that one. Motion to accept, George? Yes. Don't read yet. No. <laughs> Second by Citruit. All of any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Feasibility funding. This motion will be read by George. No. Ready? Go for it. Voted that the South Shore Regional Vocational School District hereby appropriates the amount of $900,000 per the district agreement for the purpose of paying costs of the MSBA core program feasibility study for South Shore Regional Vocational Technical High School, 476 Webster Street, Hanover, Mass., including all costs incidental and related thereto, the study, said amount to be expended under the direction of the Buildings Authorities, Building Authorities MSBA grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA and any costs the district incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the district, provided further that the amount of money authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth 
in the feasibility study agreement that may be executed between the district and the MSBA. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, before that, before George's motion is taken up, I, just a, a friendly sure. amendment on the um, on the sixth line uh, yes. where it reads, the school building committee, the district acknowledges that the Massachusetts school, I think, George, you just, you just skipped that line. I may have skipped over that. And I just wanted that noted so that when, for the formality of this, oh, sure. yeah. Jim will record this motion in its entirety in our minutes. It doesn't become official until the minutes get voted on at our next month's meeting, so I apologize for the pardon, interruption, but just for the record. Pardon my omission. Not at all. <laughs> it's covered by the mask. Yeah, yeah, I think I've lost it. Second. Seconded by Rockland. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Any requests for action? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Uh, a couple of months ago, just to uh, update the committee, uh, Bob had mentioned about a school finance workshop. I just wanted to mention that yeah. that workshop is happening this weekend on, on Saturday uh, from 10 to 12. And we have uh, one, one person from Norwell and uh, several members of Whitman's Finance Committee will be in attendance. This is something we'll offer to our towns again in the future as we get into the next budget cycle. It's going to be 90 degrees. There may be a few other things going on. So if the attendance is a little lighter, I'll understand. But this won't be the only time we offer this to our communities. Thank you. That's good. Good idea to have that program. OK, I need a motion to go into executive session. OK. Abington, Sidgwick. Make a motion not to, to, to make a motion to correct the motion is not to reconvene. Uh, given that we are going to take up an MOA matter, we, we, will, we will need to come back just for that item. Yep. Okay. Yes, we have questions. Just, just well. asking if we have Not a problem. So. Thank you. Roll we'll call vote to go into executive session. Yes. Whitman, yes. 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 Noel, yes. 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 Hanover, yes. Yes. Hanson, yes. Sister, yes. Yes. Rockley, yes. 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 Abington, yes. We are now in executive session. We will return to open session at the conclusion of the executive session. Okay, we're back in open session, everyone. The next item is the Unit B MOA. I ask for a motion to accept the Unit B memorandum of oh, agreement, which is, includes a $33 an hour wage for bus drivers, pay for unused accrued time, and referral stipends. It also includes language on athletic runs and on contracting of bus services. Motion made by? No. no. I'll second it. And second by Whitman. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Motion to adjourn. With all due respect. Whitman? Second. Second situate. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.